Well, somebody stole our generator. Uh, they stole it right off the back of the bus. Welcome to the tale of two Smitties. We're Cody and Laura, and if you're new here, let's catch you up. Before winter, we bought a school bus, a big yellow school bus. Cody flew out to Phoenix with Laura's dad, Grant, to make the drive back to downtown Dallas. Since then, we've been plugging away on our schooly bus conversion, turning a bus into a tiny home on wheels. We've had help from both of our dads, Cody's dad, Wayne, and Laura's dad, Grant. So if you'd like to follow along on our journey towards bus life, click subscribe, and sit back, relax, and enjoy the tale of two Smitties. Welcome back to Tale of Two Smitties, you guys. Happy to have you here. So today we are installing flooring. Uh, we're installing life-proof luxury vinyl plank flooring. Uh, it can be installed as a floating floor so we don't have to glue it or nail it down. So it's supposed to be relatively straightforward. And uh, we are at Home Depot. To pick it up, we drove 45 minutes to get here. So normally it wouldn't take us 45 minutes to get to Home Depot, but this morning Cody found the floor that I had picked out a, a year ago, but it was never available online, it was never available in store, and he happened to look, I guess this morning, found it at this 45 minute away Home Depot. So we are in the parking lot, eager to get in and see that they have it. They better have it, it said 36 <laughs> boxes online and we only yeah. need seven so it better uh, I found it at three o'clock this morning when I was waiting for last week's video to upload which took about an hour so <laughs> so if you haven't watched that video please go watch it and give it a like and while you're at it give this one a like so when I first realized that I wasn't gonna be able to get the floor in the right color that I wanted um, I looked through some other colors that life proof had because we're pretty set on the brand um, and I had posted on Instagram to ask for all of your beautiful people's help um, on different colors. Here's what I posted and here's the results. Um, so if they don't have this fresh oak color, which is really my favorite and really what I want, I think we're gonna go with Dusk Cherry. So stay tuned and see what we end up with. No, if they don't have it, after <laughs> saying 36 boxes, I'm burning the building down. So <laughs> if you're watching this video, I didn't have to burn it down. We obviously vacuumed all the subfloor area, got all the loose dust, sawdust, shavings from all the projects we've been doing over the past year. So we got it all vacuumed up. And then one other step, we actually did this a few weeks back, is some of our screws were kind of popping up out of the floor. So I had gone and replaced those screws to make sure that they all sucked all the way down and were nice and flat. So that way our floor doesn't have any wobbly spots because of screw heads sticking out. So we just went sprinting outside because we had a bunch of stuff stored outside as we prepped for the floor. The forecast called for rain between six and 10 o'clock this morning. So here it is noon. We thought we had passed the crucial time and all of a sudden it just started pouring for like 60 seconds. But we were running to grab, we had wood for our bed storage outside and a bunch of stuff. So we just went sprinting for like 60 seconds. You make it? That was fun. <laughs> so anyway, back to it. Although we didn't need to get an underlayment for the floor because it does already have some built in, um, we picked this up at Home Depot because we wanted, I wanted, a little extra cushion under the floor, maybe a little extra R value, waterproof protection, mold prevention. The floor, floor it does have all this, it's just a little more. We're gonna try this out. Well, we're not gonna try it out, we're gonna use it and deal with it and like it. And yes, we are worried about when we cut this, all these little white balls going all over the bus. So stay tuned for that. First piece cut.
All right, so here's the first uh, first interlock happening here. Yesterday we cut out a circle for this, but when I had to redo it, uh, I decided to cut out a rectangle. I thought the rectangle would blend in with the seams of the of the floor more, and so instead of having the circle cut out, we're gonna have a rectangle, um, and I don't think it really matters. So anyway, just cutting the other piece. So uh, we're making some progress here. What I did now, now that we've got a few full boards in a row, I was laying them out to make sure we've got the pattern the way we want. And uh, I've got a couple boards to cut up here. So one of the downsides, you know, at first glance, it feels like you've got this long space to be able to just do a bunch of boards in a row. But because you've got to have, you know, you can't install uh, this board until something here is solid for it to click into. And you can't install this board until this is solid and clicked into. So you work your way all the way down, and now we find this spot where the washer dryer is going to go. Uh, and until I, you know, kind of cut pieces and do this, uh, once we do that, then we'll be able to go boom, 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 boom with a bunch of pieces right in a row. So, you know, one of the frustrating things is that you make some progress and some momentum getting one or two boards in, and oh, wait, I've got to cut all these other boards. So that's what kind of slows things down. Let's get back to it. So to run to work for a little bit, a few hours, uh, just got back here. It's actually dark now, but uh, gonna keep rolling on the floor. Uh, Laura was gonna try and meet me here, but I think she's held up with work a little bit too. So uh, we'll see, we got a lot of, uh, I got a lot done before I had to leave, um, but a lot of what's left is cuts and, and different things like that. So probably gonna add up uh, time-wise. So uh, we'll see, but let's keep rolling.
let's see where I messed up. Oh my gosh! I had it right the first time. We are leaving at the last second here. Uh, Laura's punching the code to get out of here. The gate locks at 10 o'clock. And we just made it. All right, so that was a rush. <laughs> Tell the people what they missed. I just showed them the clock. It changed to 10 as we were pulling out. Yeah, so right at 10 o'clock, it all shuts down. The locks, you can't come in or out. And if it's 10, you're locked in. So we looked at our phones, realized we were about to be locked in. Didn't even clean the bus, locked the bus up, jumped in our cars, drove out just to do this video for you lovely people. <laughs> so last time we said we were always going to leave a car outside the gate because there's a pedestrian gate and we didn't today because we were like, oh, it's 830 with plenty of time still. See you at home. Goes to show ya. See ya at home. Well, somebody stole our generator. Uh, they stole it right off the back of the bus. It was ratchet strapped on there, but it also had a cable around it uh, with a lock. Pretty good sized cable. It takes some bolt cutters. You'd have to show up planning to take it. You couldn't just stumble into it. Which makes me wonder if it's somebody uh, that rents a space nearby here. That would be too bad. Um, let's show you. So I walked around the corner. We were here checking some things out. It's Thanksgiving and uh, they cut the cable and the straps. They didn't even undo the straps, they just cut them. And there's the lock on the ground. It was tarped over, bungeed down, strapped on there and then locked. I was here last night too. Um, I think I left around four or five yesterday. So it happened between then and now uh, also found this hole cut in the fence, so that's not good. Right there. So that sucks. Um, it's really disappointing. I don't know, it just feels weird, like... You don't expect somebody to just, you know, you're in a locked parking lot. I, I don't mean to sound like I, I can't fathom it happening. I just, you know, it's covered with a tarp. It's strapped on there. You, it, you can't see it from anywhere. I mean, there's no, it just feels like it has to be somebody that's in here that has a spot in here. There's some workers that have different trucks and stuff in here. It just feels like it's got to be somebody in here that knows it's here, right? Like... And that just sucks. Like, we're renting a space just like they're renting a space. And, and there's guys with tools on trucks all over the place. Like, I, I never once thought of taking something off of their truck. Like, I don't know. It just blows my mind. I, I don't understand. And the effort that goes in. It's not like I left a... Well, we left a gas can out a couple months ago. We filled up the generator and left it under the bus. Uh, I was in a hurry. I didn't want it to smell up the bus. And uh, it was gone. So somebody took a gas can. Okay, it's sitting out next to the bus like... I wouldn't do that personally, but it doesn't surprise me. Um, but the effort and the forethought that goes into showing up with a bolt cutters and I don't know. A second just, person to get it down off yeah, the lift. Yeah, my dad and I have lifted this thing a few times and it's heavy. Like it absolutely takes a second person without a doubt. Uh, and even still it's heavy, but like one person couldn't lift it. So just the planning to go into to do something like that the night before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving morning was pretty disappointing. It's too bad.